the so this one best of 2020 pro of the year here on on reddit the doom the dreamer the conqueror the prophecy and uh you know the prince slash s and the dawn spoilers um so he ends up linking a few major events of the doom of Valyria to the prince that was promised and the evasion of westeros so we may have we probably we had to have covered this i would say at at, at some point perhaps i mean if it was Might. like reddit, okay. reddit post of the year um, the Doom of Lyria. We know that the Targaryens fled uh, 116 BC before the Doom of Lyria due to visions uh, by uh, Danaeus the Dreamer. Uh, at its apex, Lyria was the greatest city in the in the known world, with the center of civilization civilization within its shining walls. Two score rival houses vied for power and glory in court and council, rising and falling in an endless subtle off savage struggle for dominance the targaryens were far the most powerful of the dragon's lords and their rivals saw to uh their flight to dragonstone as an act of surrender as cowardice but lord anar's maiden daughter D uh Danis, or danae or yeah Danis, uh, -huh. uh kn known forever as uh Danis the dreamer had foreseen the destruction of valyria by fire and when the doom came 12 years later the targaryens were the only dragon lords to survive that's from the world of ice and fire we also know that she had enough other dreams slash visions to write a book. Archmaester Marwyn's Book of Lost Books. He lifted the gaze from the page to study her. Hotho uh, brought me a copy from Old Town. He has a daughter he would have had me wed. Lord Roderick tapped the book with a long nail. See here, he says, Marwyn claims to have found three pages of signs and uh, portents. Visions written down from the maiden daughter of Aenar Targaryen before the doom came to Valyria. It's from A Feast of Crows, Kraken's daughter. Talking about Marwyn the Mage as his favorite character. Right, yep. <laughs> <laughs> I think easily it can be argued that these dreams or visions is where we get the actions of characters believing themselves, uh, you know, to be the prince of, that was promised. So if you're following, I'm arguing that it's possible that Danis the Dreamer, who prophesied the doom of Lyrio, also prophesied that the prince who was promised and the battle of the dawn in this signs importance, uh, like, mm -hmm. you know, section of this old book. Yep. So he's going to list out a few characters who probably could have been affected by this prophecy. Aegon the Conqueror. Long before he chose to conquer Westeros, Aegon started plans for an invasion. A common myth oft heard amongst the the ignorant claims that Aeg Aegon Targaryen had never set foot under the, un upon the soil of Westeros until the day he set sail to conquer it. But this cannot be true. Years before the voyage, the painted table had been carved and decorated at Lord Aegon's command. A massive slab of wood, some 50 feet long, carved in the shape of Westeros and painted to show all the woods and rivers and towns and castles of the Seven Kingdoms. Plainly, Aegon's interest in Westeros long predated the events that drove him to war. As well, there are reliable reports of Aegon and his sister Visenya visiting the Citadel in Old Town in their youth and hawking on the arbor as guest of Lord Redwine. He may have visited Lannisport as well. You know, accounts differ. That's from the World of Ice and Fire. We also get this video of George Martin uh, when he's promoting Fire and Blood where George alludes to speculation about Aegon having knowledge of the Battle of Dawn of the Invasion and the others. So this uh there's a lot of speculation that in some sense he saw what was coming 300 years later and wanted uh to unify the seven kingdoms to be better prepared for that threat that eventually he saw coming in the north and that the threat we're dealing with in a song of ice and fire so wow I want, so i wonder when that video uh is let me uh see if we wow man i mean here. think about that for a second that actually makes like a, almost like a lot of um a lot of sense yeah one you, you they right. want the power you want to conquer westeros you want to whatever but i mean to have the foresight and say hey uh we need to be prepared and maybe right i mean the so that video is a mystery right so that video is from must be like 2019 2020 of george saying okay so at that time it as we've learned more that george is actually way more involved in house of the dragon than, than he was in game of thrones here he is saying this thing i mean what's to say yeah. That's not connected. Dude, I, yeah, I mean, right there. So, because the, the, I mean, we have other characters here as well. But I mean, just to, just to stop for a second on on Aegon the Conqueror, if right. if they had dreams, I mean, the, the 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 promotional trailer for this was talking about dreams. Like when we for House of the Dragon, we talked about the Targaryen's ability to dream and to see things. Like that's a mystical element that would be really cool to to explore. And for if there is some rumor prior to this war that he 
I mean, foresaw this stuff and was trying to prepare a strong house Targaryen in Westeros to lead him in the wars to come. My God, that's a big deal. Right. And we don't have to go through the whole thing. Eventually, we should we should come back yeah. and do a whole thing. But the sort of focus of this was to talk about it in the respect to, you know, right. House of the Dragon and Egg and Egg on the Conqueror and potentially the idea of this theory, you know, this 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 being lost. Are we right. going to see, you know, are there going to be more connections, whether they're minor or whatever, or references or any of this stuff to game of thrones in house of the dragon and i would say absolutely like you just look at like say something like kenobi where yeah. you can like hint at something like and, Ken and kenobi right the wall right he sees this wall and he's like master quinlan was here and that's all yeah. it takes that's all it takes to sort of help build the expanded universe and right uh the world that we see in star wars and marvel you know there's all these like marvel has tons of connections where they say something like, oh, that's a, you know, a little reference yeah. to this character that's going to show up in the Hulk, you know, the Thor movie or whatever. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so you now we're going to we're going to start seeing that. It's why I, I still have said I think it would be awesome if they use faceless men and we saw Jack oh. and Hagar just because it's that face and they reuse yep. it or whatever. Um, it would could be a different person, but it would just right. be a cool way to use something that ties directly into Game of Thrones. Right. And is going to people be like, what? And then it helps internet goes crazy builds hype and the whole exactly thing. exactly you know another thing too we were talking about Aegon the, the conqueror something simple as like a scroll that was written down where he penned a raven perhaps or something of his dream uh, uh like a journal of his or anything i mean you could do a whole number of things that like other characters now have a relic or have um something that they that was important back then that would be right. that'd be really cool actually well, the dagger like the, the cat's yeah, da yeah, yeah. dagger that rhaenyra is using to try and or Allison, excuse me, is trying to use to kill Rhaenyra. Well, that ends up being the dagger that is made of the attempt on Bran's life and then the one that Arya used to kill the Night King. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they're God, you know, I don't want to go this far, this crazy, but like things like a dragon horn or a dragon binder or something, you know, if there was lore on it, even that it was right. lost or something, you know, that's not in the main, you know, uh, game of thrones series but for book fans they'd be like hold on a second right. euron's got dragon binder and there's these horns that are a big deal exactly oh. yeah and you can there there's actually you can allude to things you can allude to things that could affect the books but didn't affect the show but that's not to say that just because we didn't see it in the show it didn't exist right like dragon binder could exist in could in the game of thrones you know world oh, yeah. there's not in like there's nothing refuting yeah. that it didn't exist like you like you could have them drop a line to say something like especially if you're using like townsfolk or something or yeah you know where it's like you know there's a legend actually of a of a horn that could control these dragons because it's like what are we going to do against an army of dragons yeah exactly you know, exactly something and they're like well we, we, that's not unfortunately that horn isn't here so you know, i mean like yeah you know all it takes is like one line to sort of build yeah to, to canonize to, it and make it this right. this thing yeah no, that's what that's right. really I, I like that a lot because that's all we need we just need these little li little tie-ins you never even have to like go on and explain that dagger it's just we recognize as it as as the same um and i feel like they're gonna do a lot more of that actually i i, I think right that's um it just makes them feel more connected and people are then looking for that because especially if it's show only people because a lot of just show only people will come back and they haven't read the books and that's that's fine they're going to come back to get these feels which all the reviews are saying hey you're going to get that feel uh but then there were show verse theories we had a, a a friend way back when we started our buddy alan used to talk to me all the time about like what he thought was going on in the show verse mm -hmm. without any books just based upon what he thought was happening because they were totally separate and uh yeah you're gonna have people doing that very thing again who they're going to be looking and saying, yeah, this is um, here's their theory for the show. Uh, and then here are things that connect to Game of Thrones, which uh, is so important when you're doing this world building type of thing. So you're building out like a little universe or whatever. So, yeah. Yeah, it's just it's it's crazy. And I do think we're going to do it because, again, the other, um, you know, we've talked about the possibility. Is there stuff is there stuff in here that's going to connect to, say, even snow? Right. Because John. Is yeah. a Targaryen. So you could you could you could bring you could bring it forward. But I do love the idea uh that well one and two separate things. I do love the idea that Aegon the Conqueror did think 
that there is a, another threat out there, like the white, whether, whether it be the White Walkers or whatever. And then it is lost, especially the idea is lost during the dance when everyone decides we should just have dragons. Right. You know, this we have this this fam, this civil war that begins the fall of House Targaryen. Yeah. 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 For sure. Yeah. That is really cool. It's, it's cool to think that he had that um, because in dragon blood, dragon dreams, all those different things like they have power. There needs to be that mystical element can you know, still be there. We're going to have, what's her name? Lady Misery in this. I mean, mm -hmm. so she's going to be there, but the Targaryens themselves have, have, you know, powers and they're connected to magical, you know, dra dragons. I mean, for crying out loud. Right. So yeah, uh, I, I like that a lot actually. So.